Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this particular short video, I'm going to show you how to remove and completely strip a, a CV joint. Now, this is something that I teach my students, it's part of the course and I hear you saying already, but Andy, you can't buy individual components of CV joints, so why bother pulling it apart? Nowadays, we just pull it off the end of the shaft and chuck it in the bin, or in actual fact, quite often just buy a complete shaft. Sometimes manufacturers won't even supply you a CV joint to go on the shaft. You have to buy now a complete drive shaft assembly. Crazy expensive, too. But by pulling it apart, and looking at the various components after we've cleaned them thoroughly, it can really help with diagnostics. You can understand why a CV joint makes the click, click, click noise when it's worn and you're in full lock under load. Um, you know, so that's really helpful to know what really causes that noise. And uh, you know, if you get a different kind of noise, then you know, you know that, that is the problem. It's something else. Okay, so really the first part of the job is to remove the bands. Now, to actually get this shaft out of the car, if you haven't done this before, then you can watch, uh, I've done a few videos now, uh, there's some really early videos back in sort of December, January time, 2015, 2016, which covered removing this drive shaft from a RAV4. I did it again when we took the engine out, that was about two months ago, so probably about June, July 2016. And also in August 2016, I removed a rear drive shaft off the MR2. So there's lots of videos there to give you an idea of how to get this shaft removed from your vehicle before you start work on it. And even if you're just replacing a boot, it's a lot easier to take the shaft out of the vehicle and you can actually inspect it properly because it might not just be the boot that's wrong with it. Just putting a boot on it may not be the answer. Okay, so the first job, now that you've got the shaft stripped, is to remove both of these two metal bands and you're going to need, where are they now, uh, a pair of decent side cutters for that to get those snipped off. Now if you look around the band there look you'll see that there's you know thicker parts, pretty complicated bit over here, you'll see how they work later on but if you go about opposite there it's, a, it's usually single thickness and it's a lot easier to cut through and the same goes for the small end too so we'll just walk that in the vise and we can clamp anywhere we like around this surface here. We don't, and even down here, I suppose, wouldn't be a problem because it's not a machine surface. Just try and stay away from the areas which retain the boot. That groove there holds the boot in place. So somewhere in the middle or down here is fine. Okay, so we've got one here. This is the big band, and this CV boots. It's oh, it's getting close, isn't it? Maybe I should fit a new one of those. We drop that in there, give it a snip, and then we can take that one off. Now for the small one, same again. Now if you're going to be keeping the boot, you've got to be pretty careful doing this, but if you're going to be replacing the boot, then it really doesn't matter what you do. There you go. Okay, now those kind of that kind of perishing of the boot would indicate that it really should be replaced. It, it's not far off splitting through and allowing grease to spray all over your brakes and inside your, on the underside of your car. And it will be in New Zealand. If that grease gets on your brakes, it's a warrant fail. If you're in England, as soon as the grease starts to leak, you're not going to get an MRT anymore. So that this is the time you should be replacing that. Now, unfortunately today, I can't do that. I haven't got a new CV boot. Um, but that doesn't matter. It's not a problem. I can whip it off another day and change it before I fit, fit it back into the car. So to remove the boot off the actual CV joint, all you need to do now is pull it back and there you go, look at all that lovely grease. So I'll take five minutes, I'm going to clean all of that out and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so we've cleaned out pretty much, wow, well, most of the grease out of the joint itself. But we're going to be splitting the joint so we can clean it out perfectly uh, very soon. So you grab the joint, Stick the shaft in the vise, in somewhere, you know, part of the part of the, the actual shaft that doesn't really matter too much. It's not a machine surface. And then what you need to do is just rotate that joint around and feel for any kind of notchiness, looseness. It should be pretty equal resistance 
at all angles in all directions. So give it a wiggle, basically. And in addition to that, just lift the joint up and down and see how much play there is up and down on there. This one feels pretty good, actually. Maybe it's a bad example. Okay. So the next job is to catch the grease that's falling out. And then once we've done that, I'm going to show you how to get the CV joint actually off the drive shaft. Now, I'm going to give myself a bit of a covenant here, and those of you mechanics that have done this yourselves will know that some of these joints come off really easily. That's a few of them. Some of them come off okay, and one or two, categorically, do not ever want to come off. And it's all to do with the little circlip at the end, and it's a bit like it's a bit like this one off a tripod joint. You have a you have a little circlip here, and basically, when we're pulling the um, when we're pulling the CV joint off, it has to compress that circlip into the groove. And if one of those little legs gets dragged out instead, so it gets trapped, and it comes out basically like that, then you're never going to get it off. And once it's got bent, it isn't going to work. So sometimes, just every now and again, it all turns to shit. And then you're screwed, basically. And I think that's another reason why the manufacturers are a lot happier now just to sell complete drive shafts than they are selling a CV joint to, for a mechanic to take the old one off and fit the new one on. It's just less things to go wrong, you know? Okay. Let's give it a go. Okay, so this is, it's not the greatest way in the world, but it works without any special tools. But it does rely on some tools. Don't use a normal hammer. You must use a soft face hammer. And this is a copper hide hammer, and I'm gonna be using the copper end. Now, I've mounted the drive shaft in the vise, and this is a bit of a small vise, to be honest. I'd rather use my larger one, but it's over there, and the sunshine's on it, and it isn't gonna work. So I've mounted it in the vise, and basically I'm going to hit the end of the CV joint on this surface here. Now, if it starts to distort, then you've got to stop because you're damaging the joint. But if you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got to get the CV joint off and you don't have that many tools, this is probably the best way to do it. Now I'm going to try and support the actual joint itself to keep it parallel to the shaft, because obviously when I hit it there, it's going to put a force around like that, and I need to keep it straight. Oh, today is my lucky day. That's how easy it can be. Yours, I can guarantee, won't be as easy as that. Jeez, not often that happens. Okay, and you can see the circlip now on the end of the shaft there, look, just like on the uh, on the tripod joint that retains it in the gearbox. This one just retains it on there. Okay, well that's great. That was an easy bit. And we'll inspect that a bit later on. There we go. Right. So now, CV joint. Let's just put a rag around there. Such a messy job is this. Okay, I'll show you how to pull that apart. Okay, so like I said before, it's not often that you would even bother pulling these apart, but it's quite useful to be able to do it for, um, you know, for diagnostic purposes. So really the first thing you have to do is just swivel the joint around. And ideally you don't want to be using anything of any real force. Nothing sharp, don't just chuck a big screwdriver in there to wedge it round. And then we can start to take out the balls. Now, you know, normally you can't buy parts for CV joints, you just buy a complete CV joint now. So, pop that one out. And then roll it back in. And then take out another one. Here we are, look. Okay. Now, it is important that you remember, before you actually fully disassemble the whole thing, which way around the two components go. Because you've got the outer part of the bearing, which is actually the CV hub, the, you know, the main stub axle part, 
we've got the cage, which is this piece here, and of course we've got the, the inner part of the bearing, which has the female splines that connects straight onto the actual um, drive shaft. And it is possible, to, when we reassemble this, to put the whole thing in the wrong way around. And that's bad. Something won't work. So we're just going to mark all this up with some more paint pen. Let's try and get rid of some of the some of the grease. There we go. So we'll just put white to the outside. So we'll just blather a lot of white on there. Most of it's going to get ripped off, I'm sure. Okay, so white to the outside. There we go. It's never going to last, I know that. Okay, so now we can just continue to get those balls out. And we're just going to push, push the whole thing around. And it tends, they do tend to jam a little bit, you know, when you... There we go. Okay. And there's only six. Don't take too long to, to, to strip down. That's five. I remember doing this years ago for the first time. Nobody showed me how to done it to do it, and I had no idea how I, how it had come apart. But I couldn't work out. I went back together again. Okay. So now I've removed all the balls. This is the fun part. Okay. And all we need to do now is you'll see within the actual unit couple of the slots are a lot larger than the other four. So this one here, look, this is a lot bigger. So all you need to do is rotate it round so that the large slot is in line with one of these tangs here, look. And the same on this side here. We can just lift it out. How cool is that? Oh, put it back in again, turn it 90 degrees, line up the big slots, lift it out. Perfect. And then, to remove the inner part, all you need to do is rotate that round. And then line it up with again with the same size slots. One of them goes in, and that allows the other one to drop out. Done. Woohoo! Right, time to clean everything up. Oakley Oakley. Well, this is obviously all the components of the CV joint now completely stripped down and cleaned and ready to inspect. Now, like I said before, you're not going to do this on a regular car that's going to come into the workshops. And you can't buy parts to go inside the CV joint. You know, we can't replace one of the ball bearings. We can't buy just a new cage. We can't buy just a new inner race. It's just not possible. So we always replace them as a unit. But it's nice to be able to see how it works and what really goes on and the parts that wear. Now, this is the essentially the outer race of the joint and if we take one of the ball bearings come on ball bearing there we are and just run it in there that's where they sit and they run inside that groove and as we turn around a corner they move from side to side as the joint rotates and you can see in there look the wear pattern and you can see along there there's a bit of wear where it's shiny and again there look and a screwdriver is a really good way of checking for any kind of damage because it, it'll pick up on the slightest notch you'll feel it and there is a little bit just there look checking them all okay it's actually not in bad nick is this joint sure it's not a brand new one but it's actually really clean if I brought you one of the old Unitec ones man they're knackered they have lots of parts missing there okay so this shiny surface here does nothing. Don't be drawn into that as being a contact point. It's not. The contact points are here where the ball bearings run. That's the critical part. It's the ball bearings that make contact with that surface. And we can prove that. If we grab hold of this part here and we stick it back in all on its own, you can tell there's, there's a clearance. You can hear that. So that this surface here is not a bearing surface. So the contact points are in these grooves here where the ball bearings run. And you can see where the you can see just there look where the straight ahead position is. See that part there look? 
that's sort of the point of maximum wear, just where the ball sits in the straight ahead position. And same again there, look, and there. In fact, I'll even highlight it with a pen for you, just so you get an idea. So we're looking at just there, 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 there. There you go. So that's where all the balls sit when the car's in the straight ahead position. And what you'll find because of that, when it's done a lot of work, you'll find little tiny indents in the steel where the ball bearing has sort of made a little a little delve, a little impact in the metal. Although this is fine, this has got no problems at all. Now, looking at the inner race. Again, the ball bearing runs from side to side when when the steering's in lock or when it's when the vehicle's being steered. The more you steer, the more it has to run across from side to side. Um, but when you're in the straight ahead position, it's going to sit in a particular position. And again, we can see that by the wear markings on the actual joint. And uh, you're probably about to focus on there, but if you see there, look, there's a patch where it's worn more. Than the lines, there's like a circular patch, and again there, and again there. So, what I'll do is I'll mark those as well with the pen, just so you know, just so you can see where they all are. Because don't forget, most cars spend nearly all their life driving straight ahead, they, they're not going around corners all the time. So, we're going to expect to get maximum wear when the car. He's going forwards in a straight line. Now, so that's the drive face. Now, this side here, is, it's still got a mark, but it's nowhere near as severe. So this side isn't the drive face, unless, of course, you're in reverse. So the ball bear, each of the six ball bearings are pushing on that point there. Well, in factual fact, sorry. This has been driven by the drive shaft, so this is pushing the ball bearing uh, towards me, basically. And... Uh, and making contact inside there to drive the wheel. But really there's hardly any telltale signs of any wear at all on this joint. It's in really, really good condition. Um, the cage, well the cage is even more interesting. And you can probably see on there, look, I think you can, yes you can. You can see that little line there, the sort of the polished surface is in a line. And you get the same one there, and on the, even on the long slots, we've still got the lines. And what that is, don't forget that the cage basically supports the bearing and controls where it can go. And that bearing basically runs from there to there as we go into lock. And the same here, look. It's pretty tight fit. And it runs across from side to side when you're turning. Now, obviously, when you're driving straight ahead, it sits in the middle. Not a problem. Okay, so if we build up the cage with the inner race, and I'll chuck a couple of ball bearings in there, and then you can see that as the, the center swivels from side to side, and that's basically what's happening because it's a CV joint and it allows the front wheels to turn, that ball bearing has to move from one side to the other within each of the cages, and that's where that line comes from, that mark. Now, when a CV joint starts to click, that sort of telltale sign that things are getting a bit worn, you'll find a dot at the end, an, an, an impact, uh, a depression, there you go, proper word, there's a depression at each end of that travel. And that's what can cause the, the clicking noise, or basically what does cause the clicking noise when you go into full lock. It's that ball bearing. It wants to be in the depression. It's easy in there because there's more space, you know? And when it pops out, it makes a bit of a click noise. And obviously, as if you're in lock, which is when the clicking noise normally happens, it's jumping in and out of that depression very quickly. And that's the click, 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 you know, as you turn around a corner. Okay, so I'll show you how to assemble this bit, and I'll put a couple of ball bearings in, and uh, you can see how they how they function. So, sorry, that was way too quick. Okay, so both the outer edges, that's the, the bits with the white that are marked. Okay, we just line up one of the square ones with one of these ridges, drop it in there like that, and then rotate it round so that the white is at the top. And that's essentially 
you know, assembled. Now what we need to do is line up the grooves of the inner race with the holes of the cage. And then you can pop some of the bearings in. Now obviously this isn't how you assemble a complete bearing, this is just to show you, to demonstrate how it sits. And you can tell those ball bearings are such a tight fit, they just clip in to the cage. And that's how they should be. If they keep falling out, then you know that things are a bit worn. There you go. So that's essentially how it sits, you know, once it's inside the hub. Now, sure, we can't put that in like that, but uh, it gives you an idea of how things rotate. And you can see how the balls move in respect to the inner moving around. You can see that they, they sort of walk down the cage a little bit. Obviously, when they're under load, there's a lot more movement going on, you know. And, I mean, this, this here, if I pop that... In, onto the drive shaft, put the drive shaft in the vice and try and turn it, we should see those moving from side to side. Let's give that a go. Okay, so we've got our little unit all built up and don't forget it's the white facing outwards from the joint, so it has to go on that way around. And we'll just slide that down there. It doesn't have to go all the way on, it's just uh, so it's key to the shaft. Make sure all the balls are all the way in. And, and now, if the car turns, those balls are going to move it like that, you see? Nope, oh, there you go. I knew I was going to drop one. Now, obviously, they have an outer cage, these balls, to hold them all in place. But it gives you an idea of how the whole thing works. And it, it's a marvel of engineering when these things were designed. But it does mean that there's, you know, they can easily wear. There you go, look. Use my fingers as the is the hole. And that's basically what's happening. Obviously it's the shaft rotating, but that gives you an idea of, of how the whole joint allows so much steering travel, you know, steering movement. It's very clever. And of course it keeps a constant velocity. That gives the, the whole joint the name. So the outer shaft travels at the same speed all the time as the inner shaft. There's no sort of speeding up and slowing down like you get with the universal joint. Okay. I think that's enough uh, of the boring stuff. I'll show you how to reassemble the whole joint. Okay, so first job is to mount the, the female part, the outer cup, or chalice, or whatever you want to call it, uh, into the vise. And we need to load it up with some grease. Now I'm going to build this up dry, just so you get a better idea what's going on. But for you guys, you're going to need to put a lot of grease in the bottom down there, look. Don't fill it full of grease, there does need to be some air gaps, but uh, it, you know, it does need to be lubricated, obviously. Now, just before we drop the cage in, uh, some other problems with these cages, other than when you get the little indents in there. The, the bigger the depressions in there, the more it's going to click, and it's a fail, you know, that, that's why the, the joint's making a noise. But they can also crack. These are hardened steel, so often we see little cracks that can originate from those depressions as they're a weak point out to the outside. Obviously in a really bad condition, a really bad situation, the whole cage could have collapsed. It could be in a number of pieces. The first job is to um, insert the inner bearing component, which is this piece, into the cage. So that goes in there like that. We've done this bit already, haven't we? Into there. And then we twizzle it round. And that now is, you know, assembled. The next job is to insert these two pieces back into the outer joint, the outer sort of, the outer race, so to speak. And you've got to locate the squares on either side. And just, it doesn't matter which one of these it is normally, you can just slide that down. Now remember to rotate it so that the white, again, the, the outer, the outer of the, the race and the outer of the inner race are, you know, the ones that I painted white are facing towards you. And then, all you need to do is pop in the ball bearings. And there's one lock. Slide that down there. Do the next one. Slide that in there. This is a really nice joint to work on, actually. Normally they're a bit of a pain. Yeah, that'll do. Now, obviously, this is going to get the dry, so it's a lot harder to, to move things around. But we can we can make it work. There we go. Okay, and a bit more. Pop that one in 
in there. There we go. Let's go get that one in. Come on, mister. You can do it. They're actually really good things for the students to play around with these because it's, it really gets them thinking about engineering and how things go together and how something that looks impossible to come apart they can start to understand how they're actually constructed. There we go, last one. Nearly. A bit more. There we go. Pop that into there. And then down she goes. Nearly. There we are. Right. Perfect. Now this, this is a really tight joint, so this is good. Okay, will that fit in there, look at that. Bit of leverage, can't go wrong. So there you go, that's the joint now working without any lubrication in it. And you can see how it works, you know, it's pretty, it's actually really, really cool. But there's a lot of wearing surfaces. And, um, you know, as those surfaces wear, you're gonna get more clearance, you're gonna get more slack, and the whole thing's gonna start to chatter. Now wear on these things isn't really so much you know with the joint in and out that's a slight indication but you might be help ah, there we go it might just be slack you know a bit of bit of clearance between the the inner and the um the actual circlip so you're gonna you're gonna feel it on the shaft but the joint isn't actually moving but with these you know you want to be looking at the joint and it's that in and out kind of play, there you go, look, there's a bit. But more to the point, it's the rotational play that you're looking for. So I'm now grabbing the shaft and rotating it forwards and backwards. And there really is no movement at all. This is, this is in very good condition. So there you go. That's how to assemble a, um, you know, a CV joint. Now, it's not often you do this anymore in a workshop, but you might want to do it on your own car. Well, if you've had a pretty weird kind of noise coming from the front drivetrain, then, you know, taking one of these apart might give you an indication to, you know, as, as to where the noise is coming from. It's going to help you to eliminate components. You know, it might be an internal gearbox problem that's causing the noise. It could be the front diff, you know, in a front-wheel drive car. So, pretty cool piece of engineering and lots of wear points. And yes, they do fail, but nowadays, well, you can replace the complete unit, just the whole CV joint, or if you're buying genuine, which is crazy expensive, they nowadays supply you a complete drive shaft. So you get the CV joint, you get the drive shaft, and you also get the tripod joint to boot. <laughs> okay, right, I'm gonna pop this back in the vise, strip it all down, fill it with grease, reassemble it, show you how to insert the shaft, and then we're gonna drop the boot over the top and I'll show you how to fit those clips. Righty ho, so that's the joint now, all built up, full of grease ready for the drive shaft. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, now the end, which is the CV end, which is this one here, I've put the uh, little circuit back on there again. And all we need to do is pop that in there, making sure that that circlip aligns. There we go, look. And grab our little special magic hammer, that's your copper hammer, give the end of the shaft a whack. And that's it. Done. And that's it reassembled. And that's not going to come out of there now. So now we need to add some more grease. And we can slide the boot over. So we've got here, this is the uh, the CV boot. Now, no, I've not replaced it. And yes, it should be getting replaced, really. That's pretty bad. But I'll buy one next week and just drop it on. But there you go. Still working. It's not leaking. So it would last, a, I don't know, a short time, I suppose. Okay. So we'll slide that down. And before we put it over, we're gonna put some more grease in there and on the back of the joint, and then we'll slide that over the top. So I'm gonna move it around the vise a bit now. And we'll stick it in the vise. Excellent. Right, copious amounts of grease. Wipe that in there like that. Right, 
Remember how much grease came out of this thing when we stripped it down? Pretty amazing. There we go, that's what I want. And remember to pack the joints the best you can. Now, um, if you can try and keep the grease off the surface where the boot fits, that would be great. Although, usually quite impossible. So let's give that a bit of a clean around there. That just helps them not to slip off, you know, if they're dry on there. There we go. Okay. I think that'll do. Right. Motors Action. Okay, so now the boot needs to go over the outer of the CV joint so that it slots into those grooves on there. Now this is a the old original boot, so it's already shaped to those channels, so it's going to sit on there really easy. And then the rear of the boot, if I push it too far, you'll see where it should sit. There's basically a groove, or a raised section with a groove in it back there, and that's for the small end of the boot to sit in. There we go, look. Okay. Now, this next bit, where we're going to fit these... Uh, metal clips, you're going to need, to do it, you really do need one of these. And this is the special tool for fitting those clips. So I'm going to show you how it works, um, but essentially it's got a, basically like a winch bit here, look, that drags it round, and it's got a little cutter at the end as well. But in addition to that, and they're about 20 bucks, usually from your local store, that's what we pay from over here in New Zealand, you could do with a little hammer. Now, I'm not talking about a big hammer or a copper hammer, I mean a, a little hammer. One that you don't hit things very hard with um, because it's really, really useful for bending over the two little tabs. So the plan of attack, we'll do the small one first. It'll be in the length, so we'll open it all the way out. We'll stick it around there. We'll stick it back together again. And then we're going to go around again. Now you don't have to go around again, but it's long enough to. So we'll stick that through there for the second time. And we've still got quite a bit of spare, because we need that spare to get it into the tool. There we go. So just tighten it up by hand, and then give it a kink over, and that's going to lock it while you get your tool in place. There we go. They're pretty easy to work with, actually. Okay. Now, with the tool, you've got to feed it through the end here. Make sure your cutter's in the open position, so that it can feed through the cutter. And then we're going to slide it into that, into that wheel there, and it's got a little slot for it to go into. And I think, yeah, we've got enough to do that. So through there, through the cutter, and then down through the little wheel. Now you don't have to push it all the way down because it'll feed itself in anyway. And we could just rotate that round and get it so it's working on the camera for you. There we go. Rotate that round a bit. There we are. Right, you can see now that as I tighten that up, it's drawing the excess through little joint there look like that now don't over tighten them whatever you do but all you need to do then is bring it over at 90 degrees and then we can give it a trim with a cutter so we just trim that off there we go and we can remove that tool and now bend that back get your little hammer Flatten the end down, and then flatten the two little tabs. Oh, wrong way. He says. There we go. And that's it. It's done. How easy was that? And that's going to hold it in place. There's no way that's going to come off there. Now, uh, we'll do the large one so you get a second chance of watching it being done. Right, a larger one this time. Now, normally, you, you, get, you only get to do one wrap with these rather than two like that one. Okay, goodbye bag. Right. Oh, these are pretty big. Let's have a go. Right, so just undoing it pretty much all the way. There we go. Right, get the same way around. 
Dum -dum. Yeah, I think we'll be able to do two routes with this one as well, actually. There we go. Thread it back through again on itself. You get it, make sure you're in the groove all the way around. Give it a little bit of a tug and then bend it back on itself and that's just going to hold it in place whilst you align your tool. Now obviously we'll get rid of the old shrapnel. There we go. Reset your tool so your cutter's off and there's a passageway through. And then we can just slide that in there through the cutter and into the drum. There we go. Perfect. Now we can start to take up the slack and then roll the tool back in the, uh, the normal direction. Give it a tug on there. There we go, we'll pull it around a bit for you so you can see what's going on. And once you've got it tight enough, yeah, it's definitely tight enough, bring it back on itself and then activate the cutter. And as soon as you can, just bend it over all the way because that's all that's, that's keeping the tension. Hammer it down. Hammer down the two little tangs and it's done. Perfect. So there you go. Um, that is how to completely disassemble, inspect and reassemble fitting a new boot, not this time around, fitting a new boot with the, uh, the proper clips to hold it in place. And it's a pretty important task. I mean, I know we don't do it uh, normally in a garage anymore, but it's really useful for understanding how a CV joint works and for diagnostic. You know, if there's a problem with the drivetrain, front wheel drive car, and it's click, 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 what's going on? Can we fix it? No, we can't. It's going to go in the bin. Uh, but you do need some special tools, and it's well worth buying these. It saves a lot of hassle. I've seen people trying to put those clips on using long nose pliers, trying to roll them up. It never really works. These things, very, very cheap. You know, there, actually, there isn't a lot to them, to be honest. 20 bucks, 30 bucks. This has lasted me 15 years. Money well spent. And also make sure you've got a little tiny hammer because that's really cool for tapping those little tabs over. Okay, well, that's it. That's it for CV joints. How to strip them, how to inspect them, how to put them back together again. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then why not? Uh, click the subscribe button and uh, if you want notifications, click on the little gear symbol, open that up and turn on notifications. Now you will find Andy Mechanic on Facebook and also on Instagram. And I think, I think actually I'm on Twitter as well somewhere, who knows. But I'll put those uh, icons on the screen for you as well. Okay crew, well thanks for watching and uh, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.